Hello friends, in the series of history of India 1750s to 1857, today we will talk about the nature of the revolt of 1857 and as all we are aware that in the last discussion we talked about the causes as well as the consequences of the revolt of 1857 and historians they have expressed various opinions with regard to the nature of the revolt of 1857, the Cambridge school, the colonial uh, uh, the colonial school from that perspective, the Cambridge school, their ideas uh, in the context of 1857 revolt is that it was a sepoy mutiny. On the other hand, the nationalist historians, they consider the revolt of 1857 as a war of independence. There are other scholars, those who see it as some sort of a conspiracy and others, those who see it as some sort of a civil rebellion. So, what we have to figure out in this context because the point of views are varying in nature and they have given their own ideas with regard to the kind of viewpoint which they have given. Uh, some of the readings uh, which you can refer is P. C. Joshi's Rebellion 1857 and Symposium, V. D. Savarkar's Indian War of Independence, Vishnu Bhatt Gotse's Memoir of 1857 Rebellion, Maza Pravas, which has been translated by Shanta Gokhale and Priya Dharkar as Adventures of a Brahmin Priest in English and it has other translations as well. It has been translated uh, in Hindi, it has been translated recently in 2012 again. So, these kind of translations uh, which uh, because this memoir is largely in uh, Marathi, so it gives an insight uh, into uh, the kind of a travel of a Brahmin priest uh, from Maharashtra uh, and he was planning to come, he, he came to northern India, he wanted, uh, he wished to go to um, Mathura where he had to attend to certain uh, religious rituals. So, we find that these, uh, these kinds of uh, first, uh, first hand accounts are very rare and Maza Pravas is the first hand account of a person who was an eyewitness. Uh, when he visited uh, these areas. Apart from that, you have Shekhar Bandhupadhyaya's book as well as Bismoyas Pati's book on 1857. When we tend to see the sources on the revolt of 1857, uh, we find that we have the colonial sources that way, uh, the officials of the East India Company, later the British Crown, we find all of them, uh, the way they have written their history is in a very biased manner. Then you have the indigenous sources, oral as well as the popular history like folk songs, folk tales and little attempt has been made to understand the thoughts and actions of the thousands of the ordinary non-elite villagers who rose on considerable scale. So, we find that there, there is a lot of scope in terms of unearthing the sources of the revolt of 1857 and how uh, this kind of a revolt which became quite popular among so, uh, so many people at that point of time that how British they had uh, to resort uh, to killing of people on a very large scale. The, the way uh, uh, in, in certain regions we find that the, none of the, uh, not a single tree was left where uh, some or the other person was hanged. So, this kind of brutality, this kind of a violence which was exhibited by the British uh, in response to the 1857 revolt, it also conveys this kind of an idea that it, this revolt was widespread, it, it was supported by a lot of people and if uh, the people, those who remained loyal to the British, uh, be it the princes, be it uh, the elite section in certain regions, if they would have supported the revolt, then the situation would have been completely different in 1857. So, in that uh, context, we see that Maza Pravas, as I was telling you, it has also been uh, uh, translated by Amrit Lal Nagar as Aankho Dekha Gadar in Hindi and it is a contemporary account from that perspective that uh, the person who travelled uh, from uh, uh, Maharashtra to the northern India. So, his journey from there uh, till the point where, where he also comes to Jhansi and he witnesses the fall of Jhansi. And he also closely describes uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai and uh, he also talks about the kind of violence which was perpetrated both by uh, the colonial rulers, the British rulers uh, as well as uh, the indigenous population. So, that kind of a violence was criticized by 
uh, Vishnu Bhatt Godse who has uh, written this book and uh, we have to understand that uh, he was not a historian, he was not a writer and uh, he was uh, one person who got embroiled in, uh, in the mutiny of 1857 or the uh, first war of independence of 1857 and he has uh, tried to explain from his own perspective the kind of events which were taking place uh, in the mutiny or the revolt of 1857. If you see the historiography, we will come to know that uh, the imperialist historians like Holmes, Sky, Roberts, uh, they call it a sepoy mutiny and uh, John Seeley uh, suggests that it was totally unpatriotic and selfish with no native leadership and lacking popular support. So, the idea of the people those who are conveying that it was a sepoy mutiny, they suggest that there was not an element of patriotism in 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 the revolt of 1857 and it was completely selfish in nature and the kind of leadership which was there uh, that leadership was not native from that point of view that they had to take uh, lead, uh, lead the leaders were elite in nature and uh, the kind of support uh, which the mutiny could get was not widespread. But if we take into account the kind of uh, 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 the kind of violence uh, which was uh, there perpetrated by the, perpetrated by the British, then we will find that it was uh, quite popular, and that is why British they had to wait for so long to recover the areas which they had lost during the revolt of 1857. And uh, some of the other historians like Holmes, he says that it was a conflict between civilization and barbarism. And this idea uh, could be seen in the framework of the kind of racialism which we can see. And uh, uh, British though they were alarmed by the popular character of the revolt, they insisted on calling it an infection or a disease that spread from one area to another. So, we find that uh, the historians they have uh, tried to see the 1857 revolt in a uh, different in, in varying kinds of way. And uh, the people those who argue that it was a kind of conflict between civilization as well as barbarism, then uh, to see British as civilized and to see the native population as uh, barbarism, it uh, conveys that uh, it was the kind of racial attitude of the rulers and uh, uh, you cannot just see that the British could be seen in a very civilized kind of manner because the, they, the, the way they handled uh, the revolt of 1857 with all their might with all the kind of violence uh, uh, which was witnessed during this time. And uh, even then despite the fact that it was quite popular they always communicated this idea that it was an infection or a disease uh, which was going from one area uh, to another. And uh, Talmis Khaldun has talked about this view and communicated that if uh, British they just call it a sepoy mutiny then why did uh, the why the British views they do not explain the course of the events and the rapidity of its widespread nature and why at so many places people rose in favor of the sepoys these things they have not been explained by the British. And if it was so important then why it was very important why why, why it was considered necessary uh, to punish the people of India when it was just a sepoy insurrection. So, these are the kind of questions which have been raised by the historians those who are criticizing this idea that it was just a sepoy mutiny. On the other hand uh, uh, some other people those who were connected uh, with the British as they were engaged uh, by the British in different kinds of services. Uh, for example, Sayyid Ahmad Khan uh, where he has written Asbab e Bhagavate Hind and this talks about the causes of uh, the revolt of 1857 and he was uh, employed by the British government at that time. And uh, Sayyid Ahmad Khan focuses on the discontent uh, at various levels and he says that how at uh, uh, different places people were not able to understand the policies of the government and the government was also not able to convey what it intended to do. So, this kind of a misunderstanding, this kind of a miscommunication at different levels uh, is seen to be the reason of the revolt of 1857 uh, by Sayyid Ahmad Khan. Then you have other scholars, uh, the likes Otram and Taylor, those who see it as some sort of a Hindu Muslim conspiracy and they say that how Hindus and Muslims they came together. 
Malison uh, also uh, regards it in the framework of a conspiracy and SN Sen he rejects these kind of ideas which have been communicated by Malison where it is seen as some sort of a conspiracy and SN Sen says that revolt was not pre-planned and their origins were in sepoy discontent and it was deriving strength from the disaffection among civil population. So, what we find is that uh, the scholars those who are just trying to uh, portray that it was some sort of a conspiracy are not able to understand that it was not the way it was not pre-planned that way. SN Sen uh, argues uh, that it was not pre-planned and Sipoy's uh, uh, origin uh, of discontent was one of the main reasons and it was uh, getting the kind of strength from uh, the disaffection among the civil population. So, the civil population which was also dissatisfied in many of the reasons uh, it was giving the kind of support uh, to the sepoys. So, these kind of ideas in the framework of the conspiracy which have been uh, tried uh, which have been given by some of the scholars uh, they have also been rejected uh, by the Indian scholars they have suggested that it was not a conspiracy at all. And the others those who see it as some sort of a war of independence Karl Marx uh, conveyed that it was a national revolt. Benjamin Disraeli he was a contemporary conservative leader in England and he also calls it as a national rising. He questions in the parliament whether it was a sepoy mutiny or whether it was a national rising. Uh, Savarkar uh, V. D. Savarkar he described it as a planned war of national independence which was guided by the nationalist principles of Swaraj and Swadharm. So, we find that the different scholars uh, be it Karl Marx, be it Benjamin Disraeli or V. D. Savarkar uh, who have seen it as uh, a nationalist rising, they have seen it as a war of independence from that perspective and Savarkar conveys that uh, the principles of Swaraj and Swadharm, Swaraj uh, is self rule and Swadharm is self religion. So, all of these things they were very important uh, for the sepoys those who participated in it and at the same time the civil population uh, which participated in the revolt of 1857. It also uh, in a way uh, tried to connect it dots uh, that way that they saw it uh, the kind of uh, the way the British uh, were exploiting Indians over a period of time. So, various kinds of discontent at the social level, at the economic level, at psychological level, uh, at the at uh, political level all of them they came together and uh, Sepoy's revolt that way or the revolt of 1857 was a reflection of uh, the ideas of Swaraj and Swadharm. Some scholars like S. B. Chaudhary they talk about the civil and military character of the revolt and they call it as the rising of the people. Uh, we see that sepoys they struck the first blow, they did not produce necessary uh, leadership necessary to channelize activities of uh, rebellion, rebellious troops. So, we find that uh, scholars like S. B. Chaudhary they talk about the civil as well as uh, the military character of the revolt and uh, they call it as uh, the rising of the people. They say uh, and Chaudhary especially uh, talks about uh, this kind of an idea that you just have to find not only talk about the military character, but uh, one has to point out the civil character of the revolt as well. Because so many people uh, they participated in the revolt, revolt apart from the sepoys and these people they were also providing all sorts of support to the sepoys uh, whenever necessary. So, this uh, 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 civil element was very very important and at times the military character of the revolt uh, it took a back seat because the civil population they it also came to the forefront. And S. B. Chaudhary he says that the first combined attempt uh, of many classes of people to challenge a foreign power and it could be seen as a freedom movement of a later age. On the other hand Thomas Metcalf uh, suggests that it was something more than a sepoy mutiny, but something less than a national revolt. So, we have uh, diverse kinds of ideas on the on the one hand there are people those who see it as some sort of a challenge to a, to a foreign power and they say that how it also provided some kind of a platform uh, for the freedom movement which began in the later times. And on the other hand there are other scholars 
those who say that it was more than a sepoy mutiny but it was less than a national revolt so how to categorize 1857 revolt uh, is uh, by different scholars Uh, and how they have tried to communicate their ideas keeping in mind uh, the various kinds of various kinds of sources which they have pointed out with with their own inter, uh, interpretations scholars like bailey they have seen uh, indian rebellion of 1857 uh, as not one movement uh, it was many uh, citing the differing reasons for revolt by different sections as shown by eric stokes so this is what bailey does that uh, Uh, he sees uh, the different reasons of revolt at by the different sections uh, which has been explained by eric stokes uh, but if you see the revolt of 1857 then one will find out that e- even if uh, it was not one movement if varying kinds of movements they were there then it does not take uh, any kind of credit away from the revolt of 1857 but it also conveys this idea that how british they were unpopular among all the sections of the people though all sections of the society they had their own personal reasons uh, that they were being offended uh, by the british rule so uh, the unpopularity of the british rule was one factor and how all of them they wanted to remove the british uh, from india was another important factor when uh, all of them uh, they came together and participated in revolt if uh, we see some of the features uh, of the revolt we find that the uh, uh, there was a distaste for the british state that how british they were bringing disruptions into the lives of the people and anything which was against uh, which was there as authority of the east india company became the target of attack then they felt that caste and religion was under threat and uh, rebels they were fighting for their deen and dharm which is the faith as well as religion and they believed that uh, to restore a moral order uh, we which had been polluted by an intruding foreign rule so we find that all these kinds of things they were there in the revolt and uh, one of the important features was that how uh, british they had disrupted their lives on the other hand they wanted to attack anything which was connected with the east india company and how their uh, deen as well as dharm faith as well as religion both of them uh, they were under serious threat so they wanted to in a way fight against the british to save both these things and how a moral order could be restored uh, by removing the foreign rule from that place so their main ideas uh, with regard uh, to the revolt of 1857 was that uh, the people those who were uh, rebelling against the british those who were called as rebels they were fighting for their own faith they were fighting for their own religion and they had this kind of thing in mind that once british they will go away then they their uh, their moral order w- will be restored and british they were seen to be as uh, some kind of a pollutant and this pollutant had to be removed so that again uh, their moral order or their uh, purity can be restored historians like gautam bhadra uh, they talk about the uh, perception and the day to day experience of the authority of the alien state uh, in his immediate surroundings that determined rebels action this is what he argues and he also communicates that rebels were unknown to each other and separated by their different experiences they were pitted against same enemy at same historical conjecture so we find that uh, historians like gautam bhadra they have uh, communicated such kind of ideas uh, where they are suggesting as you can see on the screen as well that how uh, rebels they were unknown to each other and how they were also separated by their own experiences but when they were fighting against the british then they were fighting against the same enemy at same point of time so this was very very important uh, from that point of view that uh, it was it was also not possible that every rebel could have known each other because they were coming from different directions they were coming from different states but one important aspect was that they realized that they had a common enemy and this common enemy was trying to subjugate them in every way they realized at different sections of the society Uh, from the civil population as well as the uh, army which was uh, part of the revolt of 1857 and uh, 
Another important aspect which is also associated with the revolt of 1857 is that uh, uh, the issue of loyalty that how uh, um, profession of loyalty by the Calcutta intelligentsia uh, it was not without dilemma and they were also feeling that uh, Hindu patriot uh, one of the newspapers it uh, described grievances inseparable from subjection to a foreign rule and Hindu patriot also talks about uh, this loyalty springs nearer from head than from heart. So, any kind of idea which regard to the issue of loyalty of the people that how many people they were loyal uh, to the colonial masters during the revolt of 1857. So, one has to realize that this kind of a loyalty was there from the uh, head because people were thinking from that perspective that if uh, uh, British they will remain in India then what will happen. So, they, they had all sorts of sympathy for the revolt of 1857, uh, they wanted the colonial masters to go, but at the same time uh, this thing came from their head rather than from their heart. Some scholars like Judith Brown they have seen it in the framework of uh, the elitism that how the feudal elements they were the decision makers and these decision makers and they were shaping the presence as well as the absence uh, uh, they, they were they were shaped by um, presence or absence of a thriving magnet element which was committed to the British rule uh, for they could give revolt a general direction. So, Judith Brown is uh, talking about in the framework that how feudal elements were the decision makers and Eric Stokes also talks about uh, the elitism of the movement in the rural context that the rural revolt in 1857 was essentially elitist in character. So, historians they have pointed out the elitist character of the revolt, but it does not mean that if elitist character of the revolt was there then there was no popular element. The popular element of the revolt was definitely was definitely was there and uh, historians they have talked about the popular character of the revolt, they have communicated that uh, how the British they resorted to the violence at all levels and how British uh, when they were uh, uh, they were pursuing a violent policy against the rebels then they were not uh, seeing that uh, which element whether the army element or the civil element all the elements uh, which were uh, there against uh, the colonial masters all of them they were subjugated. Uh, they were repressed and Sumit Sarkar rightly points about uh, uh, the revolt of 1857 and he says that if you see the trends in the Indian history that all these uh, trends in the Indian history they will communicate that uh, elem uh, the elements of elitism as well as popular uh, trends are there in the Indian history and the revolt of 1857 was also not an exception from that point of view that you find both these kinds of uh, trends. And where you will find that uh, things like chapatis etcetera they were being circulated in the different villages at that point of time they were conveying different kinds of meaning to the different people. So, they were seen as some sort of a symbol or an omen uh, rather than index or cause of an impending crisis. And uh, it is also very difficult to ignore evidence of autonomous mobilization of peasantry in rebellion. So, we find that uh, the popular character of the revolt was there in uh, which was communicated uh, through the various kinds of symbols which were there as well as the elitist uh, uh, mobilization was also there. So, the idea of Sumit Sarkar appears to be more accurate that we have to see Indian history from uh, this perspective where both kind of trends are there in 1857 revolt was no exception where we will where we find both the elitist as well as uh, the populist trends. So, now I would like to uh, end this discussion, we will continue further in, the, in our next discussion on the nature of revolt of 1557, uh, thank you.